percentages. Um, can we really say that an asset or a currency with so much volatility is a store of value? Because that's been one of the concerns raised this week with the crazy volatility we've seen. Yeah, I would say a couple of things about that. Firstly, volatility is a natural function of price discovery. Um, and it tends to contract as market cap expands. So that's inversely proportionate to market cap. We've seen that pattern play out with Bitcoin, that its volatility is actually contracting. Um, and secondly, as a store of value, it really comes down to how you define a store of value. So Bitcoin is an asset that's monetizing in real time. It's a, call it a trillion dollar market cap at 60,000 per Bitcoin. It's more like 700 today. It's competing for a $250 trillion marketplace, which is global store value. So it's very nascent relative to its total addressable market. But what's unique about Bitcoin in terms of in a, sort of a secondary definition to a store value is how much of the total supply can I own? What are the, what are the assurances that I'm provided of owning a guaranteed fraction of the total supply? And historically, gold was the technology which best satisfied the store value property. You knew with utmost certainty that whatever portion of the gold supply you held, you couldn't be diluted by more than roughly 2% per year. Bitcoin offers us something radically new. It's a money premised on perfect information. If I hold 1 million Bitcoin, I have 1 million of 21 million possible forever. No one can ever change that again. So it's perfect inelasticity of supply, and that is the property that market actors seek in a store of value. So Bitcoin has perfected the store of value function of money. So going off your reference to gold, and gold has proven that it is a store of value over thousands and thousands of years, it has to the test of time. But gold has also been used as a payment method, as a currency from gold coins to gold bars. Transactions have been made for mm. goods with gold. So does it matter if Bitcoin never takes off as a currency, as an actual form of payment? I mean, Elon Musk saying he no longer accepts Bitcoins for Tesla payments and governments from Turkey to China saying it can't be used for transactions. So how does that impact the long-term viability of Bitcoin if it never really becomes a currency? Well, the evolutionary path that gold followed was that it was initially a collectible. Um, really adored for its its beauty and um, uh, you know, people could adorn themselves with it, eventually it became a store of value. And that as societies began to trade, this became one of the most liquid assets because it satisfied monetary properties. It was only later then that it, when it started being used in trade widely, that it became a medium of exchange. It became a denominator of prices. And then finally, it becomes a unit of account. So people actually start to think in the money that they're trading with most widely. Bitcoin's following a similar path of monetization. And today, I would just say that we're early in that store value phase. Um, so ultimately, no one needs to jump the gun. We don't need to start using it as a medium of exchange immediately. The incentives for Bitcoin, it's, it's a, an accumulation game or a land grab. You want to take as much territory on this absolutely scarce monetary network as you can and hold it until a certain market capitalization is reached that has incentivized you to go and want to spend it. So that's the path it's following. Uh, it doesn't matter if Elon wants to accept Bitcoin for Tesla or not. That has no impact on Bitcoin success. But does it matter if it never actually takes off as a currency, as a viable means of payment? And that's the case that uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell made today. Now, granted, he may have other incentives to discount mm. the currency aspect of Bitcoin. But for your projections of Bitcoin reaching that $12.5 million price tag mm -hmm. in, in 10 years' time, does it matter if we don't actually ever use Bitcoin to purchase things, be it cars or uh, a cup of coffee? No, the free market incentives take care of themselves, actually. It's the reservation demand when someone's choosing to hold Bitcoin for whatever reason, taking it off the market that actually creates upward pressure on its price. And then those individuals that enter the market uh, properly at the right price point, as the market cap grows from that reservation demand, they have increasing unrealized gains built into that position. So there's an increasing incentive for them to go and spend over time. So I don't, I, I'm not concerned at all about it being ultimately used as a medium of exchange. I think it's a natural progression of money. 
uh, the, the difficult thing to understand for people is that we've only seen one asset monetize in this way, and it was gold. And it took thousands of years. Bitcoin being on a digital you know, epistemic playing field, this is happening much more quickly. 